and a very welcome to all of you for this pre-service portion. You know, pre today, co-hosting with me, I have with me Priscilla! Oh, it's me! <laughs> it's me yeah. again! It's Priscilla and we're going to see oh, a lot oh. more of her, uh, I, I assume. Will we How see a lot I? more of you? Why? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Alright. Okay, Aaron, how's your week? How's my week? Wow, what a what a pivot, uh. Uh, Anyway, yeah, pivot. How's my week? I think my week has been pretty good. Uh, so far, I mean, uh, I we I've, I've been doing a bit more. Also, the RDI guys, uh, RH Day In. Mm. Uh, look out for your mail because we have sent something oh, to you guys. Oh, so uh, cool. It's gonna be so like so snail amazing. mail. Snail, ah, uh. it is not snail. It's gonna be fast. Snail mail means slow, right? Uh, okay. No. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> With the stamps and all. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So anyway, guys, <laughs> if you are on the chat, right, uh, I, I y'all can ask any questions. Okay, we will respond to you. Okay, so we are as yeah. live as it gets. So just in case, you know, I had some, I heard some conspiracy theories, uh, that that we are actually pre-recorded. So I don't huh? know how, how how do I make this as live as I you can. You can so type in the read. chat. Yeah, you type in the chat. I will respond. Okay, so Melvin says hello, welcome to service, welcome. It just says hi, yeah. welcome to service. Oh, oh my goodness, oh, oh, today oh. Got, wow, so many people welcoming. Wow, I feel so warm today. Feel so warm. But I thought you just now say that the aircon very cold. Yeah, the aircon actually is actually throughout very cold. since one pm. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cold. It's so cold in the hall. Yeah, but now you're feeling warm. We are usher, ma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Pris. Yes. Don't you think it's a uh, strange something about us? What do you think is different about us today? What do what do, well, what do I you guys think? think? What you know, do I something? think is different about us? Uh, <laughs> hmm. We are we are kind of twinning, uh, but we yeah, are yeah, we're twinning, twinning. We're actually wearing Ooh! like like like. Must we still be safe distance? Yeah, but we're still safe distance. We never touch, just so you yes, know. Yes. So actually, we are wearing uh, ethnic clothing today. Uh, yes. Why why are we wearing ethnic clothing? Today? Okay, we're wearing ethnic clothing <laughs> because uh, this week is our missions awareness week. Oh. But but of course, missions awareness is not just about us wearing ethnic clothing. There's much more than that. So um, if you see on the screen, soon a link will pop up. And basically, Grace, this is celebrating Grace Mission's 40 years of occurrence. Is, is, the, is the link up? Wait for it, wait for it. Coming, it's coming. Coming, coming. Okay, All right. Then, okay, it will come soon. But anyway, Grace Mission is celebrating 40 years. Yeah. Of Forty yeah, forty years. years. Forty years oh is. My <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. I'm very tired to say. You know, forty years is uh, it has been around longer than, than uh, a certain somebody we know, Pastor Joey. You know, it has yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> PJ is younger PJ than is Grace Missions. Can you believe it? Yeah, can you believe wow. it? Grace Missions was around before our Pastor Joey was born. Eh, my goodness. Wow, I'm twenty four. Eh. <laughs> so Grace Missions was okay. I'm let me do the math. So Grace Missions was around for. 16 years until I was born. <laughs> wow! I'm okay, 25. But anyway, the link that we are going to show you is uh, chrono chronologically about the start to right now, about how Grace Missions has been formed, how Grace Missions has been blessed by God. Mm. And yeah, it's a really interesting read. I just read it just now this afternoon. So if you are free, do take a look and just celebrate with us about how Grace Missions has been growing so much. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there, if you can see in the link, Sam has oh, actually posted, Scissor Sam has actually posted in the link, a the link chat. in the chat below of the of what we are talking about. Okay, so if you click there, you can see all mm. our testimonies for like the last 40 years of uh, missions efforts. You know, it's amazing. I think I think a lot of you will be blessed. A lot of you will be super encouraged by mm. what you can find there. So yep. uh, if you have the time, go, go, go over and click that. Uh, but of course, do it at uh, after service maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can do it read read while you're listening to us. Uh. Yeah, like a podcast. Uh. Ah, like a podcast. I think yeah. we, we do a pretty good podcast. <laughs> okay, can <laughs> Aaron, so anyway, since we're yeah. talking about missions, maybe Aaron, oh. you can share a bit about what your missions, your overseas missions mm. experience was like. Okay. So mm. uh I actually have only been to one mission trip. Uh and I went for this mission trip maybe wow, how many years ago? Seven something around seven, eight years ago. Back huh. in my first stint of uh internship in church. Lah. Mm. So uh, I won't name the country because it's a bit uh, sensitive. So I went over to this country and then, you know, it was so amazing because there's really two things that uh, I think 
uh, two two dimensions that I'll look at it lah. So first of all, like I was very blessed uh, by when I was there. So clearly, as I went there, you know, you start to your eyes are open, right? Your 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 uh, your your world is broadened. Oh, oh okay, right? yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. see things that you don't typically see because I think we are so blessed in Singapore, you know, mm. like and if we are always enclosed by all these blessings and all, you know, we don't see the the greater need in the mm. world. Right and, yeah, that's true. and you know every day we worship in Aircon. Every day we have an amazing worship team. You know, to to facilitate the the atmosphere mm. and all. But you know until you're there and then you're like sweating while you are worshiping. You know, yeah. And yeah. and these people they you clearly know you can clearly see that they are not there for the aircon. They are not there for comfort. Right, right. They just want to be in God's presence. Mm. Wow. When you see such things, right, it really opens your heart. You know, it really helps you to see beyond that. And so that's how how being in missions has blessed me. Mm. And also, of course, when we are there, the second thing is that uh, the people there are always so receptive. You know, they are so receptive to receive us to hear uh, what we have for them. Mm. The God's word and everything. You know, they 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 really treated us like royalty almost. Oh, is it? What, what do you <laughs> yeah. mean? Why why would you say that? Though? So okay, so the example I had, right? They literally uh, right outside the church as they were welcoming us. Okay, we were late uh, because of uh, <laughs> certain things. You know, people yeah. always say that uh, sometimes if your mission trip is too smooth, right, then it's not a real mission trip. But so what happened was our flight, right? Yeah. The runway was damaged, so oh my we gosh, had to take. Your land. Yeah, we had to take a uh, a uh, bus and train right, instead right. of. Uh, Taking the flight, oh, that's so why it you're was. Late, yeah, that's mm. why it was mm. ooh, horrible. The, the journey. Okay, the journey was bad. Okay, but uh, the, the 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 experience of the mission trip overall was good. So, you know, the the train right, it's not like our MRT. You know, the the it was so bumpy. Uh, when it hit a bump, right, your whole body is literally lifted off. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So we were like bumping up and now cannot sleep on. So it was the, the whole ride was about 24 hours. Okay, but that's not the point. Okay, so when anyway, we were late. arrived yeah, a bit yeah. late, right? Yeah, yeah. They were all standing outside in two lines, you know, receiving us, you know. Oh. I, and I think that really wow. shows how much they really want the word of God. Yeah, yeah. That's how much they they, they see the, the the you know, like some a new perspective of how mm-hmm. God can 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 bless them. Right, so it was actually like a youth uh, conference for the youth leaders, and these guys are uh, they are coming in from all over the the village. You know, some some you, you know, I was thinking, I was saying like how our train ride was very bad. Yeah. They t- they took motorcycle up the mountain. Wow, they came all the way just to all the way and listen to you guys. Yeah. Wow. Way more than twenty four hours on a motorcycle yeah, with yeah. like three four people on it. Mm. You know, so so first of all, like you see their 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 hunger for the word. It's crazy lah. So there's so much that that we we really experience, so much that I personally experience. And I don't know about you guys. I, if you all have certain experiences in mission trips, why don't you all put down in the chat below, right? Uh, and in the meantime, you know, what 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 about you, Priscilla? What what's your your missions, uh, experience like? Okay, honestly, um, <laughs> when I when I got approached to host this week, and I realized it was missions awareness, I was thinking, actually, I've not been. To an overseas mission trip before. Oh, you know really? That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh dear, I'm like missions unaware. This I, I'm like <laughs> not a very good person to host this. Like I was telling my colleague yesterday. Yeah. And then but then this morning I was really thinking about it and I thought, hmm, that's not but missions is not just about hopping on a plane and like mm. doing a mission, but missions is ultimately in God's eyes, it's just about making God known to those that do not know him yet. Yeah. Yeah. And and when I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, that whole like imposter sy- syndrome thing that like, lifted off me. I was like, wow, actually anyone can be a part of this whole like missions awareness thing. Anyone can be part of a mission with God. Yeah. And yeah, Lord, so that is my personal thoughts on missions. Yeah. And I hope that's a that's an encouragement to those that are listening to this also and are thinking, uh, oh, I've not been to an overseas <laughs> mission trip like me. But yeah, your mission field is like anywhere. It could be like your workplace, it could be mm. your school. Oh, that's it could true. be yeah, it could be social media even. Yeah. Amen. And yeah, definitely, right? In this um climate. Yeah. Climate. Yeah, in this climate. Yeah, so I hope that encourages you guys. And now we have this is Oh, it's 3 p.m. Okay. All right. Welcome to the people who are just tuning in. So just before this, uh, in our pre-service portions, uh, Priscilla and I were actually talking about uh, missions because this week is actually missions awareness. So as you can see, we are dressed in our ethnic clothing. Uh, and really, you know, just now earlier, we were also sharing a link. Maybe later someone will put the link down in the chat. So 
actually Grace Missions has been around for 40 years to date, you know. Mm. So, uh, and we, and you know, the link will, later on, as you, if you click on the link, you can see our entire, you know, many testimonies, how people have been blessed, how we have been blessed, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so we have been sharing our, our experiences or, or lack of, la, or rather. Lack so, of. <laughs> so, like, our experience of missions and how uh, we, we view missions, mm. you know. So, uh, again, I just want to welcome you guys back to the Next Gen service. You Hello. know, always so glad to have you welcome. here with us. Welcome, welcome. Let you know, so. Yeah, also, right, I just want to, to shout out, right, for the people to shout out to the people serving. So, I mean, like, on screen, you only see the two of us, and later you see the worship team, but behind us, right, there are many people supporting yes. us. Many, many people many, from many, the visuals many. team to, to the people behind the camera. Uh, okay, there are many people, okay? So, I don't know if you... Why don't you, like, just help them, you know, like, like, like why don't you type in the chat below how much you appreciate them and thank them for their efforts. If you can, text them if you know them personally. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of people. In this. There's yeah. a lot of people behind the scenes. Like, true. You just see the both of us, but that there, there needs a lot of people to get this going. So we really thank God for those that are willingly. Mm. I'm just looking around because because <laughs> no because they're all around us. But but I yeah I really thank God for like the people that avail their weekend to come down to serve. Mm. And I think that's really it's really wonderful. It's amazing, hey. Mm. Well. It is true. Okay, anyway, we will be <laughs> transiting to worship. It's a time of song, a time of worship where we want to point our attention to God, mm. to point our attention to our Creator, to point our attention to the one that loves us. So, would you, would all of us just maybe take a, take a look around your surroundings, like to create a space for yourself to worship? I don't know where you guys are now. Uh, maybe you're listening to us on the train, or maybe you're at home, or maybe you're at work. I don't know. But yeah, just take some time to prepare a space for yourself to worship God. And we are all doing this together even though we are physically apart, but in so we are united in the spirit, yeah. Okay, so let us uh, close our eyes, bow our heads, and I shall open this time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin this time of worship, we want to point our attention to you, Lord. We want to point our attention to you who is the God of all things, the creator of all things. Amen. You are the God that loves us so, so much. And Lord, I just want to pray that we will not uh, be consumers, we will not be uh, spectators of this worship set. Lord, we will not be uh, people that are just looking at the screen. But Father, I pray that you would help us to, to look towards you in this time of worship. Lord, would the, would the words that, uh, that we are singing minister to us personally. And God, I pray that we we'll use this moment to speak to each and every one of us. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, church, to service. It is Missions Awareness Weekend, so let us sing that God is moving among the nations, that revival is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you put your hands together and rise if you can to sing. We sing, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, touch your people. Teach us the ways of God. And as we live, as Jesus did, you are honored and lifted up. There's a stirring in the Spirit. There's an urgency in this hour. We are children.
Him, yeah. Praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are bringing revival to the nations, Lord. Hallelujah. So even as God is moving, let us be motivated. Let us be motivated by the love that we see in the Lord to want to move His heart with what we do, how we serve, with what we give. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Lord. None in the earth or heavens above That I have found more beautiful You are my treasure, my great reward I just want to move your heart it's all I want to do I just want to stand in all Pour my love on you No matter how much the cost I freely give it all to you All to you It's your love made away Hallelujah Hallelujah request that uh, for you to prepare your, your emblems, could it be your bread, your cracker, uh, and your cups. Okay, we are going to go into this time of communion to remember the work of Jesus. You know, communion is really a time where we believers remember our Lord and Saviour Jesus for what He has done for our salvation. You know, but if you have yet to receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, I would kindly request that you refrain from this portion. You know, the reason why we do communion is really to remember Jesus and what He did specifically for each and every one of us to win our lives back for Him. You know, the overwhelming agape love that Christ displayed, you know, the grace that He, the King of kings and the Lord of lords should die for us. You know, because of Jesus' obedience to die on our behalf, Today, we believers are undeservingly led back to the embrace of God. So let us take some time to reflect on this and really give thanks for what He has done on our behalf. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread together. same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and His people, an agreement confirmed by my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until He comes again. Let us partake of the cup together.
Father Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful gift, oh God. This wonderful gift of salvation that we have done nothing to deserve. Father, today as we remember what you have done for us, as we remember what you have done for us on that cross, your love, oh God, your overwhelming agape love, oh God, your grace, oh God. Father, as we remember these things, oh God, you help us, oh God, to, to realign ourselves, oh God. Help us to realign our own selves, to, to come together, to, to really embrace your being, oh God. And if we have done things, oh God, that, that are against you, Father, we pray, oh God, that we will make every effort, oh God, to seek you, oh God, to seek you to find forgiveness, to seek you to find restoration, oh God. So Lord, we just want to thank you for this wonderful time where we remember you and all these things, oh God, we give thanks to you. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We sing the second verse, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, my offering, all my ambitions, my hopes, my dreams. Here's my life, Lord, the sacrifice, oh, just to bless you.
my vows Is it a song I sing? Then here's every melody Just tell me what moves you Lay it all down Just tell me what moves you truly what must I surrender what must I give for the sake of your glory for the sake of your kingdom that all may come to know the Lord that all may come to that saving grace hallelujah won't you deposit that in us Lord I know right now right now they're sending that that, that, that Holy Spirit that still small voice that shows us that points us in, the, in that direction that you are calling us to. Don't let this moment pass you by. Really ask the Spirit and really receive with a heart of surrender, with a heart of gratitude the calling and, and, the, and the message that the Lord wants to place in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we dwell just a little longer in, in the Lord's presence. I sense the Lord saying, how can, you tell, how can you not tell the others about this? How can you not tell others about this? Even if they are one nation away, even if they are oceans away, how can you not tell others about this beauty that you have discovered? How can you not tell others about the pearl of great price that you have unearthed? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So Lord, first assure us of that love that you have for us, the empowering love that causes us to go out. Hallelujah. Show us Lord, and let us receive it. Just begin to receive it and accept that for yourself. that word that you have placed in our hearts Lord we move only because you move us Lord we move only because you first loved us Lord, so let us go with that transforming empowering love that your spirit fills us with today Lord let us dwell in your house forever and tell others of that beauty that we have discovered for ourselves Lord so until all nations sing Lord we will serve Lord we will give we will go Lord so all this that has transpired during this time of worship we commit into your hands and we thank you for your spirits moving Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen Hallelujah. Amen 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 Wow Amen As I was worshipping I was reminded of something that I shared on Instagram this morning which I'll read, just read one line it says the question how was worship is a question only the object of our worship can answer. Wow. And yeah, and as I was and I was listening to the second song, I just wanna move your heart, it's all I wanna do. Mm. I just wanna stand in awe and pour out my love on you. And it really reminds me that worship is not about us, it's not about what we think about the song, what we think about the set, but it's really about offering our praise to God. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, and I hope that this as we as we go through this remembrance that this act of worship will really just transcend our lives, like, will be part of our lives as the way we live out that, that our lives will also be about Him and not about us. Amen. And with that, we will move on to a time of welcoming those that are here for the first time. Uh, I know for one that uh, my, colleagues are, <laughs> my colleagues are watching, so shout out to you guys. Hello. And if you're like my colleagues that are here for the first time and you want to connect with us, you want to find out more about Grace, you want to find out more about our Next Gen ministry, we would love to welcome you, say hi and... Uh, get to know you a little better as well. So yeah. a connect button will be popping up right here. I don't know where to point here. Chat, here, the there. <laughs> yeah, there. And yeah, you can click on the connect button and it will link you to a form. Fill it up and we will be quick to welcome you guys mm. on board with us. Yeah, so if you're just here for to find community, maybe you're just here you chance upon our link, you know, or maybe you're just looking for questions to be answered. Mm. You know, we really, really welcome you and we'd love to, yep. to introduce you and, and welcome you into this uh, wonderful ministry. Yeah. And without further ado, uh, you know, it is my great privilege today to introduce our preacher. 
You know, currently he's serving as a lay pastor of Grace Assembly of God. You know, he, he's also serving, uh, sorry, he's serving as a lay pastor in Grace Assembly of God, but he's like the, the mission direct, mission, uh, sorry, country director for Ooh. India and Bangladesh. Right, at the same time, he's also leading our healing room ministry in Grace Assembly. And on top of all of that, he also started his own ministry called JHM, Jesus Heals Me. Wow, power you know, pack. Power pack, right? Yeah. Which is essentially <laughs> wow. like this healing evangelistic uh, mission um, ministry, right? And so if you follow him on uh, his social medias, you will certainly see heaps and heaps of testimonies of people being healed by God and subsequently giving their life to God. Right, so why don't you join me in the chat below as we welcome Reverend Matthew Tan to share the Word of God with us. Come on, let's welcome Reverend Matthew Tan. All right, hallelujah. Um, I do not know whether there's a video, but then I think the video will show later. All right, well, more people, more like Jesus, yeah? To God be the glory, amen. But we want to thank God for what He has done through Grace Missions uh, throughout the years, uh, 40 years. And you know what we are doing at Grace Missions is really about reclaiming the nations. Okay, and this is really part of the sovereign plan of God. So, well, um, thank you, Aaron, for introducing me. Well, um, my name is Pastor Matthew. It's great to be speaking to you today. Thank you for giving me the chance to speak to you about missions. You know, for the most of you, um, this will probably be the first time that uh, you are hearing me speak at Next Gen. So um, I'm currently the, uh, in, uh, serving in Grace Missions as the country director for India and Bangladesh and at the same time leading the healing room ministry for Grace Assembly. So what this means is that normally for a typical month, I will be overseas two, um, two weeks of the month and then for the next two weeks when I'm back, I will be involved with the healing room ministry in Grace Assembly praying for the sick. So when I'm overseas, right, one of my, uh, two of my favourite things to do, right, is really to do um, gospel crusades. And what, what is gospel crusades? Gospel crusades is, the, is um, basically like outdoor rallies, but we always hold them in the jungles. Why, why jungles? Because nobody go there. Yeah, no, no mission teams would like to go there. So if no one goes there, I'm young-ish, I'll go, all right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, so when, gospel, um, when gospel sharing is limited or restricted, I like to do medical camps. Medical camps, yeah. I will talk more about this later. Um, I'm not a doctor, not a doctor. And, um, but people get healed when we pray for the sick. Yeah, so this is very interesting. I would love to tell you more later, so please stay tuned. So today, the sermon, my, my sermon title is called um, Kingdom Frontliner. Kingdom Frontliner. You know, uh, um, during this thing, um, this COVID time, right, I'm like stuck in Singapore. Yeah, but, but um, many of my, some of my friends jokingly call me a Kingdom Frontliner frontline worker. I don't know what this means, but then um, they are saying that, oh, because I spend most of the time right now praying for the sick uh, in Singapore and overseas as well via Zoom. Right, so um, let me tell you a bit more. So two months back in April and May, you know, I started to see what is happening in the news and I thought to myself, why don't I start doing something for India? Right, you, you guys see the news? You know how terrible it is, uh, Delta variant and all these things. Yeah, so I put a couple of friends together and we ran COVID healing meetings through Zoom, right? And we do this every other night. So some of my friends called other friends who are COVID positive and they in turn called other friends and like many people come to our healing meetings uh, every night, every other night. So um, do you know how COVID, meet, uh, COVID healing meetings look like? Um, there's actually nothing much to look at, actually. Yeah, because there, are, there can be 100 plus people on Zoom, 90 plus of them will be, will be there with their cameras switched off. Why? Because they do not want others to see who they are, right? So there was one time, uh, one man actually switched on his camera by mistake. It's like, uh, oops, and then after that, how do I off the camera and then switch it off, right? So in that split second, okay, a few seconds, uh, yeah, I realized the weight of what my team is doing. So, um, my team members are like texting me on WhatsApp saying, hey, Pastor Matt, do you see that? you see that? See what? Behind the camera, right, was a man who is on ventilator and he was gasping for air. It's very not nice, lah. not nice. Lah. And it was so painful to see. He is dying. And I was thinking that no wonder everybody turned their camera off. Lah. So, right, actually those who turn their camera off, they are dying. Wow. And even my translator was COVID positive. It's just that his symptoms were not so severe. 
quite heavy for introduction, right? Yeah, so um, missions is real stuff, man. So, and real stuff is not always pretty. So I will tell you more about this later in my sermon, so please stay tuned. You know, older folks, right, um, they keep telling me that, oh, youth nowadays, they do not care about God and missions. All they care about is their studies and their future. Nothing else matters. Well, I don't believe them. I don't believe anything of what they just said. You know, I, uh, I look at my social media feed. Uh, most of the activists that I see, they are young people. They are calling out racism, talking about free love. Um, doesn't need to be Christian stuff, but they just, they just stand up for things, right? Call things out, call out culture, right? And, and I was just thinking about, about all these things and saying, no, you guys care about stuff. You, uh, and things matter to you, to you guys. And why is this so? Because purpose, you do not need to find purpose because purpose is on the inside. All of us are born with purpose. You and I, we are born with purpose. And that's why you want to be involved with something that is meaningful. Amen? Now, what if you are given a chance to be involved with the front lines with Jesus? Especially during this time, COVID time. And, and you know, Jesus actually talked about this. You can be involved today. So over the next few minutes, I'll be telling you about how you can be involved with the frontline kingdom work by unpacking our scripture for today. Please stay tuned, yeah? <laughs> Please stay all the end. Don't just close the window and all these things, yeah? <laughs> all right? So to, okay, so today our scripture is Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20, all right? So you can see on your screen, I think, right? Um, look through every single word. Examine it. See whether you, if you can find a pattern, all right? Let me read it for you. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20, He said to them, meaning Jesus said to His disciples, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, meaning in the name of Jesus, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands and drink of deadly poison and will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus has spoken to them, he, he was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed His words by the sign that, that accompanied it. Amen. So there are two key words that are observed in this passage. One is um, preach and the other one is signs. I want to unpack them for all of us today. Alright, the one, preach. Okay, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is what Jesus said. And then it was written that the, the disciples went out and preached everywhere. What are some of the reasons that prevent you from sharing the gospel? I'm guessing that some of you might say, oh, because I'm shy, or because I'm afraid that the person would get angry with me. You know, a few people once told me that, oh, pastor, actually, overseas is easier. La. Overseas is easier to share the gospel. Um, because there, nobody knows me. Well, they are not wrong. It's correct. They are right. Um, do you feel the same? Because uh, I also feel this way as well, you know. You may see that I'm a mission, uh, I'm, a, I'm a country director and all these things, but I do feel this way as well. And this is something that I'm struggling with all the time. Okay? And I keep asking myself this, is my faith more important or their eternal life more important? Can you imagine just because you want to save face, you deprive someone of salvation? Just because you want to save face, you deprive someone of their healing? Wow. You know, shyness is not a virtue. It is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Shyness is called the fear of man. All right? I understand that some of us are not naturally bold. Um, some of us are introverts. I'm an introvert. All right? But we can break the shyness in the name of Jesus. We can overcome it for the sake of the gospel. Amen? So pray for bonus. The Bible says in the book of Acts that the, when the Holy Spirit comes upon those in the upper room, they became bold. Can anybody say amen? Ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you. You know, some of my volunteers in the healing room ministry, um, they are really bold. They pray for people in the church. They pray for people um, on the streets. They pray for them in the parks when they're exercising. This is a pre-COVID, huh? disclaimer. Huh? All right. So um, one of them actually once told me, Pastor, 
I'm, I'm already dead in Christ already. My face does not matter anymore. Wow. You know, when I was younger, uh, I was probably just like you. Uh, I remember coming to church week after week. I remember hearing passionate sermons about missions and I hear pastors talking about healing and I was thinking, man, these people are so weird. Um, yeah, and I'm one of them right now. Okay, so, and, um, and I keep telling myself, um, I remember asking myself, telling myself, what's so great about the good news? What's so great about good news? Oh yeah, more people, more like Jesus, good, that's a good chime. Um, so what shall we eat for lunch? Eh? <laughs> you know? And all this changed when healing started to happen to me. You know, I grew up with a stutter. I don't talk like this last time. I was talking, I, I don't talk straight on. You know stuttering? You know, you guys know, right? Yeah, so I don't talk straight. And, and this affected my self-confidence. Then one day, one day, I suddenly stopped stuttering. I suddenly stopped stuttering. It's like a switch, you know? Like, not the playing kind, yeah, but it's like an on-off switch. Eh? The dog just turn it off. Yeah, so, um, and when I pray for the sick, I realize that people are getting healed. How I know this? Yeah, because people start to come back with me with medical reports and testimonies. And these are, um, these are healings from serious cases. Eh? That's why I need medical reports, right? Yeah, things like cancer, full body eczema, deafness, partial deafness, full deafness, um, lameness, okay, um, blindness, full blindness, night blindness, different kind of blindness, color blindness. Right? If you cannot see me properly, I'll pray for you later, all right? Yeah. And with every testimony I received, I was like, oh dear, this is getting quite out of control. <laughs> yeah. um, and my heart for the sick grew. Compassion and confidence grew. Right? And that's when I started to become really serious about evangelism and missions. Because, you see, praying for the sick is addictive. Missions is addictive. When you witness the power of God moving through you, you will never settle for anything less. Amen. So if healing and miracles are real today, heaven and hell is also just as real. And we must pay attention to the gospel as he has the power to save. So some of you may feel called and you're trying very hard to equip yourself. Um, I want you to remember this. God does not always call the equip but He equips the call. Amen? Yeah, and this means that the Lord, He is the one who will equip you. Amen? Inf influence, healing, breakthroughs, you know, all these things belong to God. There's, we cannot really manufacture them in any way. Amen? Yeah, so um, anyway, this is how my healing ministry started. The Lord started to use me in Singapore and overseas in the mission field as well. So I told you, I told you earlier on that I, um, when we were overseas, we did gospel crusades uh, and in places where gospel sharing is restricted, we did medical camps, all right? So what is medical camps? What do we do there, right? Yeah, so at medical camps, the mission team, right, actually stay put in a room, right? Um, the sick will see the doctors, they will go to the pharmacies, they will collect the medication and then after that, before they go out of the compound, they will actually come to the room, pass by our room before they go out. So what do we do in the room? We pray for the sick, right? We pray for them, we bless them in the name of Jesus. They do not understand us, we just say in the name of Jesus, Amen. Right? They understand Jesus, but they don't understand the rest of what we say, right? Then, uh, uh, interestingly, um, some of them can get so well and they do not know what to do with the medication. We told them to, hey, just keep it, uh, free one, uh, just take it. Uh. Right? And then, um, but they remember the name of Jesus and they will go and to the church to find Jesus. Right? So, so the interesting thing is that some of the old folks, right, they, even, uh, they, they even went home without their walking sticks. They leave the, their walking sticks right, in the room. They forgot to take it home because now they don't need any anymore. So, so, uh, um, and they, they experienced the power of Jesus because we prayed for them in Jesus' name. So, here's the, here's the point I want to make. In times when preaching is restricted, you can still pray for people. Yeah? You just need to mention the name of Jesus. When I pray for the sick, I literally say this after every prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. If they don't understand what you say, just say Jesus a lot. <laughs> Alright? So what if healing does not happen? So what if healing happens? That's a more important question. You just need to plant a seed. Amen? Yeah? So that's preaching for you. Number two, the second keyword is signs. Okay? And these signs will accompany those who believe. This is what Jesus said. And then, what the disciples did, the Lord worked with them and confirmed His word by the signs 
that accompanied. They went and the Lord followed them with His power. All right? So there are four signs listed here. Okay? You can, uh, I want you to check this out. Um, these signs will accompany, not might accompany, but will accompany. All right? Accompany who? Accompany them that believe. This means it's not just the pastor or the anointed person, but these signs will accompany every Christian, you and me. Amen. Yeah? And notice the word accompany. Some translations use the word follow. I prefer the word follow. Why? Because it's like some ghost thing follow you, but it's the Holy Spirit, yeah? Okay? Yeah, so uh, uh, anyways, <laughs> this is just something that I picture. Okay? And this means, right? This means, right? Uh, these signs will follow them that believe. What does this mean? This means that these signs will not just happen in the church, but they will follow you home, to your school or to your workplaces, when you hang out with your friends, as you go on missions, as you do things for the Lord. These signs will follow you. Amen. So what are the four signs? Okay, four, four things. Number one, they will drive out demons. Number two, they will speak in new tongues. And then there's this curious thing about snakes and drinking poison. Um, kids, um, please do not try this at home, okay? Try this at your friend's home. Okay, no. Um, just don't try this anywhere, all right? Don't try this anywhere, okay? Yeah, just kidding there. Okay, uh, in case you in case you pick it for real. Okay, anyways. Uh, um, so there's actually a context to this. Um, in Jesus' day, right, it is common for travelers to die from snake bites. So knowing this context, right, what Jesus is saying is that as you are going on missions or doing things for the Lord, you will experience protection from the Lord. Amen? So Jesus did not, did not say how all-encompassing this protection will be because missionaries do die in the few. Look at COVID, all right? Uh, but one thing is for certain, as you are going, you will have testimonies of divine protection. Okay, so the third one, you will experience protection. And number four is physical healing. You will lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed. So how do we explain this? Some of you might have this question. You see, healing is part of the spiritual gifts, correct? But the Bible is clear that only some people have it, not everyone. Let me explain. You see, the gift of, gift of the Spirit is like singing. Okay, all of us, we have mouth, we can sing, right? Some of us sing better than the others. Some of us don't sing so well. But, uh, um, but this doesn't mean that those who are not gifted cannot sing, right? Yeah, so, uh, um, so this is the same thing with healing, okay? Or speaking in tongues or casting out demons. We are the children of God. We are children with authority. You can pray for the sick and healing will follow. So some of us have more success in this area. So, and this is what it means by spiritual gifting. Get it? Okay, so basically, right, it all boils down to probability. Those people with higher chance of seeing healing happen, this means that they are gifted. But if you are not gifted, it does not mean that you have zero chances of seeing healing happen. Amen. So how do we improve our chances of seeing healing happen? We can. We can. Just go pray for more people, huh? Right? It's simple math. Seriously. Yeah, if you never try, you will never know. Just go and pray. You can be involved. Amen. Yeah, so do you find this helpful? If you find this helpful, why don't you type in the chat, say amen, all right? So now I've explained the passage, right? I understand that some of you have questions. Pastor Matthew, how exactly do I get involved with frontline kingdom work? Now, now, now. Okay? Let me just break this um, question up in two parts. Okay, what can I do? How can I prepare myself? Okay, number one, what can I do now? Okay, as in now, during the pandemic. Okay, um, I will actually do you a disservice, right, if I tell you exactly what you can do. Right? The fact is that there's actually many things that you can do during the pandemic to meet the needs of others, even remotely. Missions is motivated by the heart, by your heart, and limited only by your creativity. You know, most of us continue to give to Grace Missions and we thank you for that. Yeah, during the pandemic, the prices for basic commodities like rice, potatoes, onions, and all these things, uh, they actually rise very high. Yeah, and many people lost their jobs. So, um, high prices, loss of jobs, this means that people actually starve. 
all right? They have no money to buy food. And Grace Missions um, um, give timely help, right, um, to, to those people who are not affected by COVID, as in not, as in not COVID positive, so that they won't die. Right? So um, some of you join and did ministries for Grace Missions through Zoom, right? Do continue to be involved in this manner. Rem- uh, uh, remember at the start of my message, I was telling you about my involvement with India yeah, over uh, um, um, April and May, right? You know, the pandemic right, has really changed the way I look at missions. It's no longer about me and my strengths. It is more about God and His power. How much can I do, right? But in Christ, we can do amazing things. Yeah, so uh, um, and God has given me this opportunity to be involved in the front lines, uh, and 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 more so in life and death situations. You know, I'm not medically trained. I'm just a normal guy like you and me, like you, all right? Yeah, but Jesus says that these signs will follow those who believe. Amen. Yeah, J- you know, just the other day I received a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp message from a friend in India, and he was telling, and he was telling me, Pastor. Um, my wife just asked me, um, what if I don't make it? What if I don't make it? You know, when I read, uh, when I read that text message, I just um, broke down. Yeah? You know, with all the news of the deaths in India, the situation was actually very intense. Yeah? I, can feel that, I, I, can, I can feel this intensity even when chatting, from them from, uh, chatting with them from Singapore. So the team encouraged, uh, encouraged them and we prayed for the people. And then there are actually many miraculous healings that happened. Right? Immediately after the Zoom meeting ends, when they close, when they close, the, when they close the Zoom window, right? uh, um, their oxygen levels, right? because there's this thing clipped on their finger, you'll probably get it free soon. Right? Uh, um, from 30% gasping for air with the ventilator and it jumped all the way to 98%. Is it a coincidence? Not really, because this happens so many times uh, 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 and to, to many people. And of course, there are deaths as well, right? Many deaths. Some of my friends even died. Yeah, and I, I keep thinking that at least some people get healed. Better than no one get healed at all. So this keep me praying for the sick and calling people to pray with them. Um, you know, the next hard hit, the, the next hard hit country is actually Indonesia. Yeah? You can follow the news. Um, pray for Indonesia. Why don't you ask God, what can you do? I believe the Holy Spirit will guide you because you are a child of God. Okay, as we go, healing happens. Okay, distance cannot stop missions from happening. Amen? So, number two, how can I prepare myself? How can I prepare myself? You know, for this kind of power ministries, right, um, you cannot really prepare yourself because it's the power of God, right? How can you manufacture it? Yeah, you cannot, right? So, the power just comes as you go. It comes naturally. There's no need to force anything out, right? Like Colgate, like, don't, like toothpaste, don't need to force it out, right? However, as you are interacting with people, it'd be good if you can know more about them, okay? And the rest is on the job training, right? The Lord will teach you Himself and you learn by experience. So there are three tips that, uh, um, that, um, that I can give you to help you get started. Um, if you want to know more, please stay back for the post-service interview, all right? Yeah, okay? Number one, be interested in other people's cultures. You know, a large part of kingdom frontline work is about cultures different from your own. Uh, you, got to be, you got to learn to love different cultures. If not, why would I even want to do things for India, for Indonesia? Because I love them. I love the culture, right? Learn, uh, uh, you need to be open to learn why they do what they do. So here are some ways to get started. Now, one very, uh, uh, very common, try their food, right? It's widely available in Singapore. Just open a food panda, ask your parents to buy them for you, all right? Okay, yeah? Uh, learn a few phrases in their language. Some of you know, right? Konnichiwa, uh, uh, arigato. Why? Because you love their culture, right? Yeah, uh, watch anime. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, um, learn a few phrases in their language. Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. Ask them why they do what they do. And the, and, and the last one, um, don't be afraid of asking questions and appearing like a noob, uh. Because everyone there knows that you're a noob. La. So, so stop pretending, okay? <laughs> yeah, right? No need to pretend. Okay, so, so, so the first one is to uh, be interested in other people's culture. Okay? And then you need to strive to be good in what you do. Strive to be good in what you do. You know, whether it's your studies or your work or your ministry in the church, do your best. Okay, in Singapore, we live in a multi- multicultural society and when you go online on the internet, it's basically international waters. Okay? You wouldn't know 
uh, who is watching and who the Lord will use you to touch. Okay? So, uh, um, so what can you do right now? Right? You can, the, you can interact with people and you can treat them well, serve them well, okay? No matter who is that, who they might be, because a door might open for you to talk about Jesus. Amen. Okay? Uh, uh, and the last one, um, get overseas experience. Get overseas experience. Go for some extended missions exposure, be it exchange programs or overseas job placements. Uh, go for a mission trip. Go for a mission trip. Um, next time when you get a chance to go overseas for holidays, right? Um, don't just do all the touristy stuff. Some of them are quite lame. Lah, huh? Because you're just taking pictures where, in a site where thousands of people took it before or millions. Okay? Um, get to know their culture and language. That's even more exciting, okay? For me, lah, huh? I hope that is for you too. Okay, so if you do not know how to prepare yourself, go talk to your pastors. Go talk to Pastor Joey, okay? Uh, I'm sure that we can help you, all right? So my time is running out, okay? So if you want to know more, um, please stay back for the post-service interview. But for now, let me close my sermon by sharing with you a verse which I read during my choir time last week. This is Acts chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Right? This is not meant to be literal. It's just a manner of speech. What this means is that basically from the young to the old, we will see amazing things happen during our time. You know, the folks in the Old Testament old folks, all right? Uh, they believe that only certain chosen people get to do mighty miracles. Because at that time, right, the Spirit of God rests, only rests upon certain chosen people. But things are very different nowadays, right? We pray for the sick and we see people healed and those that are in the healing ministry right now, right, they are, they are I'm the only pastor there, nah. the rest of my volunteers, they're not pastors, but signs and wonders are happening as they pray for the sick. Yeah? And they're not especially gifted, you know. All of them, when they come to me and they are saying, Oh, Pastor, but, but I'm not gifted. How can I pray now? Of course. And that's why when they pray for the sake right now, they can see signs and wonders happen. I believe that, uh, that the days of religious superstars are over. Yeah? A new move of God is coming and this time you'll be about a whole people of God rising up and being used mightily by God. One of my favourite verses, Psalm, um, Psalm chapter 110 verse 3a, and I like this in the NKJV version, it says that your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Amen. And indeed, this is the day of the Lord's power. It is time for this generation to rise up and reclaim the nations for Jesus. And I encourage you to rise up and be counted for the kingdom of God. Get involved. You can be involved. Go meet, uh, go meet a need. Reach out to the people around you. There are foreigners among us and you shall be a blessing to the people around you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let me just pray for you before I hand the time over to the MC onto the worship team. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, those people who are watching here, Lord Father, Lord, I pray, Lord Father, their hearts are stirred. Because Lord, there is a new generation rising up and Lord, I want, I pray that they shall be counted as one of them. They shall be involved. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Lord, I pray, Lord Father, that we shall be involved, that this generation will be an, invo will be an involved generation. They will not be apathetic. I bring the apathy right now in the name of Jesus. They shall love the Lord with all their hearts and their soul and all their strength. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know. But I know here in the middle is the place is the place where you promised to be i'm not enough hallelujah i'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again that's all because all i want is all you Spirit to come and 
feel you because we're not enough i'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again because all because all i want is all you with your heart, Lord. Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Hallelujah. Wow, amen. Thank you, Pastor Matthew, for the word. And if you were encouraged and if you were touched by this word, uh, do leave an encouragement in the chat below. Mm. And personally for me, uh, what really stood out to me was that there are, he talked about how there are people that might be gifted and with the, with the gift of healing and that, is, and that is manifested in the fruits that they can see when they pray for others then they get healed, right? Yep. But that doesn't stop people that might not seem like they are gifted from going out to pray and bless others. Yeah, the chance is not zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's the probability thing. Yeah, and so uh, if you are speaking of healing and how Pastor Matthew has talked about his healing, uh, his gift of healing and if you are someone who needs healing for physical pain or even a mental struggle and even if you know someone that is struggling with that, do stay back for our after service portion where we will be just sharing a little bit more about Pastor Matthew and Pastor Matthew will also would like to pray for us yep, so do stick around for that yep. and if you are also interested in finding out more about Pastor Matthew's story there will be a QR code coming up. Is the QR code up? The, the QR code will be coming up and basically it links to an article. Ah, okay. It's linked to an article by Thirst about his story of his ministry. So if you are interested, do click that to find out more. Yeah, so I think uh, Pastor Matthew has shared so much with us, you know, like he shared with us what the missions feel is like and how we can actually participate mm. in the missions, right? Mm. You know, so today as part of our giving back to God, uh, we want to, we know that, you know, our tithes and offerings are really how we steward God's portion that He graciously blessed us with. You know, we are not simply giving God 10% when we tie. What we are actually doing at the same time is keeping 90% of mm, God's blessing to mm. ourselves, right? To, to feed ourselves, to sustain ourselves. And today, beyond this command of tithing, you know, let us look beyond ourselves. 
right? Even in this time, you know, Pastor Matthew shared so much. You know, there is so much we can contribute to the nations out there, right? And one of the many things that we can do is to support the efforts in missions through our monetary giving, right? And so next gen, this week is missions awareness and you have heard how God has been working in the mission field out there. So as you consider the amount to give, I want, to, I, want to, I want you to give an additional thought to the mission field out there as well. Okay, shall we, shall we pray for the, for, the, for the offering? Come, let's pray. Father Lord, we just want to thank you for uh, making us aware of the missions out there or the need out there for your word to be there. Father, we know, God, that there's nothing more comforting than to know, God, that you are there for us. There's nothing more comforting to know than you, your love extends throughout the world. So, Father, even for the people who haven't heard, even for the people who uh, are not, 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 uh, don't have the access to your word, Father, we pray, oh God, that you, equi- that you, that you stir in us, oh God. You stir in us something, oh God, that we will go out to the field, oh God, that we will be aligned to your mission. And if if anything, Father, we pray, oh God, that this little amount that you have dropped in our hearts, uh, this little amount will go further than ever, oh God. So we ask that you bless this little that we give and we pray, oh God, that you will continue to work through this amount, oh God. We give you thanks for blessing us with so much, oh God. uh, And we just want to really lay all these things at your feet, oh God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, at the bottom here, you'll see two QR codes. Two QR codes, one for offering. This is your typical offering. Yes. And right here is for missions. Okay, I mean, uh, there are two different QR codes and it might take a little more effort, right, for you to scan both of it. But if God is convicting you to do so, then I can tell you and assure you that this effort is well worth it. Yeah. And is you know, like you have to think bigger, right? Like for the greater kingdom of God and the souls out there. Right? And with that, uh, we have officially come to the end of service. Let me pray for you as, we, as you go. Come, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this wonderful word that Pastor Matthew has left with us. For the wonderful things, oh God, that we can uh, participate to partner with you. Uh, for the missions field out there. So even as uh, we go, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you remind us again that, that missions is not simply an overseas endeavor, but rather it's something that we can do even locally, something that we can do to reach the people around us. You know, that our reach is not, not that far, not that uh, distant. So we pray, O oh God, that you will, you will speak to us and you convict us and you give us the wisdom, the words to speak to our friends this week, O oh God. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, you know, remember that missions is not always done overseas. You know, even as you go back to school, to work, uh, or even to camp, right? The methods might change, might have changed. But the missions remain, the mission remain the same. Wow, okay? yes. Right? Amen. So make it your personal goal this week to reach out to at least one, one other person to share the gospel with them. Just one. Okay, and with that, I am going to take my leave and hand the time over to Priest and Pastor Matt. All, All right. right, let's go. To the do. And now we invite Pastor Matthew over. Okay, okay, okay. slowly, slowly. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think uh, this all right sounds familiar? All right, but okay, but I'm down, you, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah this okay. is actually my favorite portion of the service. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why is this your favorite? Uh, you uh, can uh, like. I've been watching the the, the next gen service for quite a while, and I oh. always uh, you know come to the end. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether you Everyone, guys are like, still here. Everyone like heave a breath of fresh breath of like ah <sighs> like that is it. Yeah, yeah, like because, uh, uh, because I'm not so good with scripted stuff, right? Oh, okay, and, and, okay. And then, um, Me too. Uh, impromptu, all these things, I'm quite good. Yeah, okay, so, wonderful. Um, but, but then, right, um, um, you know, like, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that all churches should do this, man. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, wow. this is like the most exciting part, right? Are you all excited? Nah? I don't know. Nah. I don't know. Yeah. I must read the chat whether they are excited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you guys can just post any questions, right? Um, yes. um Personal stuff also can. Okay, I, I will answer them as personally as I can. Okay. Yeah, and just now as I was mentioning, uh, Pastor Matthew would like to pray for those that are in need of healing or if you know someone that's in need of healing, so if there's you, you can type in the chat and then we will look and respond to you and we will pray for you. Yeah. 
Right. Okay, we are going to ensue this uh, casual Q&A. Yeah. So first thing that I wanted to ask, right, is that I'm sure that you've travelled to uh, many different countries. Okay. So I just want to know what is your favourite international cuisine? <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying, I'm asking this because I don't want to eat for dinner later. Oh, Try to get some ideas. I, I, I actually like sushi. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, okay, okay. Yeah, the sashimi things are, are the best. Have you been to Japan for mission? <laughs> um, no. Well, I, I've been there for my honeymoon. That's the only time that's there. <laughs> and um, I, I kind of love it, la, but it's kind of expensive, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Japanese food sounds good. Okay, maybe I'll have that it for sounds, dinner. It sounds expensive. But anyways... Yeah, it sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, when you go overseas, right, okay, since you're still on the topic of food, what is one local food that you will miss like whenever you go overseas? Chicken rice. Wow, that's a very fast answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken rice. I always come back, like, if I have back-to-back trips, right? sometimes I have back-to-back trips and I'm only in Singapore for like, uh, for, like a few hours and um, um, the... I always How go for just two run things, and uh. go and get the chicken rice? Right? Yeah, yeah. Ch- change my bag, you know, because I must pack, right? <laughs> yeah, then uh, charge up my things. That's that's more important than packing your bags. Okay, um, <laughs> then what? Uh? Yeah, chicken rice. Um, what, what, what's that called? The, the green colour stuff. The, huh? the very big, eh? Gan zhe sui, gan zhe sui. What's that gan zhe sui? What's gan sui? What? Sorry, Chinese. Ah, sugar, sugar cane, sugar cane. Yeah, sugar oh, cane. I love yeah, sugar yeah, sugar cane. Yeah, sugar cane. Um, uh, you can have it in other countries also. Not my generation, but you say san, wah, san zhe, gan zhe sui, gan zhe sui. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Okay, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, um, other countries also have, like, but some countries, they just put their, their sugar cane at the roadside and you know sugar cane, they absorb everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so um, yeah, I will be back in Singapore for the cancer sui. Okay, you know? okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you for telling me your food preferences. I have an idea of what to eat now. Uh, buy for me. La. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, yeah. anyway... Um, yeah, okay. Just now I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you were here yet, but I was telling them that I have not been to an overseas mission trip before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, 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 the mission's unaware, right? Yeah, mission's unaware. So as <laughs> a mission's unaware person, right? Unawareness. And maybe some of us are slightly yeah. a bit more mission's unaware, right? Yeah. Okay, tell me a bit about going overseas for a mission trip. Like, maybe you can tell me about your first time um, going for a mission trip. What was that like for you? What Any, like, encounter that really stood out to you? Okay. Mm. Um, well, um... <laughs> My favorite encounter. Okay, how do I put it? Uh, I have a lot of encounters, and I thank God for them. Um, uh, let me talk about the healing part because that one struck oh, okay, out okay. the most. Yeah, sure. yeah, because the first healing that I ever saw, right, is in Pakistan, right, and I was alone. I happened to be alone, and I was preaching in the hall of around five hundred people, right. So which here, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so around five hundred people, right? Then. Um, Hey, you don't zoom in so much, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so scary. Are you okay? I will look here from now on. All right. Yeah. So, so um, all around five hundred people. So I was the young guy. I was how how old how was are I? You? How how I was uh, I was twenty four. Wow, I'm thirty four this year. Twenty four, twenty four. Yeah, twenty four. Yeah, I'm twenty four this oh, okay. year. Okay, I thought you said. Hey, why 24. you correct me as if you think I'm older? Ah. <laughs> no, okay, no, but no, anyway. No, no, because I, I thought you, you said thirty four, but Not okay. Uh, so, so I was twenty four, mm. uh, same age as you now. Mm. Okay, uh, but years ago lah. Yeah. <laughs> the, okay. Um. So so as I was preaching, right? Um. And and you know, in Pakistan, people sit. Um, people segregate themselves by genders. Mm. So, so the females will sit. Um, the females will sit this side. The male will sit this side. And then in the middle, there's an owl, right? Mm. And, and then um, as I was preaching, right, four men brought their friend uh, to um, down the hall, uh, And and why four people is needed? Because that man is paralyzed and there's no wheelchair over there. So they really take their hand and their feet. Four people bring them all the way down the middle of the owl, put it in front of me. Yeah, so I remember that because as a Singaporean, when I look at that, I only know one thing. Oh, this guy is trying to cut Q, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, um, I understood that they want prayer, lah. I want to cut Q, lah. So, okay, no problem. And then after I uh, after I preach, I do not know what came over me. I suddenly have this uh, uh, um, bout of courage, right? I go down and I say, stand up. Oh, oh. Oh, like the Bible. Oh. Uh, uh, of course, nothing happened. Nothing happened oh, oh, yet. Okay. okay. okay yeah, okay. because <laughs> because the friends, right, were looking at each other thinking I'm crazy. Yeah. I said, no, bring him out. <laughs> stand up, stand up. How do you get that, like, wow, that boat of courage? Like, stand oh, up. Oh, I do not know. It just came yeah, over me wow, suddenly. Eh. Right, it just came over me suddenly. Okay. Uh, oh, I have a story for that. But anyway, oh. uh, I do not know we have time. But let's let's go ahead with this story first. Yeah, so... um. Uh, I asked the man to stand up. The friends look at each other thinking I'm crazy. I say, pull him up. So they drag him up by the armpits. You know, two people yeah, drag yeah. up by the armpits. Then I started to pray for him, pray for the legs, okay? Pray for the hand. He was half paralyzed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so paralyzed people, half cannot move. So he cannot even sit up straight. He was 
just lying on the ground. So they prop him up. I take up the hand. I pray for him in the name of Jesus. I move, move it out and down. I let go of the strong hand. Of course, it moves out and down. Hallelujah. Then I let go of the weak hand. Oh, the weak hand is also moving out and down. By that time, oh. the legs was also moving up and down. All right? And he was so happy that he looked like a madman. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then he jumped out of the service hall through the middle. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, 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 so I was like standing up there and stunned. Then the whole hall, right, um, didn't expect this to happen because uh, healing ministers usually are the older ones, white hair, white beard, look like the, you know, Chinese Kung Fu master kind. Yeah, so, so, uh, uh, so this young man, right, uh, uh, was, was, praying, uh, was praying and healing happened. So what happened after that? Uh, I was mocked, lah. Right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So 500 people started to rush forward. They want prayer. So I was the first time praying for the sake. First time seeing he- healing happen. I was shocked. Wow. 500 people rushed at me. Then what would I do? I ran away. <laughs> yeah, I ran out through. <laughs> ran out through the back door. I didn't right, pray right. for so anyone. This was your yeah. first time. Like... So that was my first time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was wow. uh, a bit embarrassing. Embarrassing. <laughs> oh, you yeah. are truly. So um, <laughs> pastors, please don't try this ever. All right. <laughs> okay. Aaron, please don't. Okay. Next time it happen to you. <laughs> okay. Wow, thanks for sharing. That's a very eventful first time. Yeah, and yeah. I'm so just looking always... at the uh the chat. Has there been any doubt when you started doing healing ministry? Oh, um yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes, really. Yeah, yeah. When I pray for a sake, I always wonder if will the person get well or not? Huh? I, I I I don't know. I don't know. I I, I do not I, I'm, not, I'm not the weird kind, right? Oh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the hand will shake. Oh, in the name. I sense this my spiritual <laughs> antenna this going around. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are people doing all these things, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I sense. Oh, I sense this guy will get healed. Uh, I speak a word of prophecy. No, 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 no. But no healing happened. <laughs> you know, yeah, most of the time it's like that, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not that kind. When I pray for anyone, I just go and pray because, mm. you, because and then healing just happened. I don't have any feel. I don't feel heat. I don't feel cold. I don't feel fire in my hands. I just pray for the sick. The sick get healed, right? Yeah, so, uh, and this is how I teach people as well because uh, you don't need to sense you don't need to have a sensing or don't need to feel anything special when you pray for the sake because the Holy Spirit moves through you naturally. All right, this is what it means by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm, wow, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess the doubt is like, it's something that is very human, but you yeah, can still it's just very human, go. Yeah. But just go, no? Yeah, yeah or just go, no? Uh, 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 in, in fact, what makes you think, right, that God cannot work through your unbelief? Mm. Yeah. It, uh, uh, I've seen people get healed, no? even if they are not a Christian, eh? In fact, non-Christian pray for another non-Christian, but they non-Christian pray for another another another, another <laughs> non-Christian pray for another non-Christian in the name of Jesus and healing happen. Wow. Why? Because the, the people at the crusade they are copying what we are doing on the stage, and non-Christian pray for another non-Christian and healing happen. How do you explain that? Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm so just looking at the question. So, uh, um, Oh, so I suddenly got a lot of questions and like everyone's yeah, very yeah, curious. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, oh. I hope you guys are fired up, huh? Because oh. some people think, right, that your first healing, right, is wow, you pray for pimples, uh, pray for headache, uh, pray for no uh, my first healing ever is pimp- um <laughs> a lame man. Okay, lame. Okay, um <laughs> uh, uh, actually jump out from a service hall. Right? So so that's my first healing ever. So it doesn't really go by progression. Yes. Yeah, yes. It, amazing things can happen anytime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow, okay. It, it, my phone's quite small. <laughs> Maybe you can see better. <laughs> I also, I also like, try to like... Uh, yeah, yeah, whoever's designing all these things, <laughs> please uh, make the phones bigger. <laughs> all right. uh, okay, how do you reconcile the... I find this interesting. How do you reconcile the job of doctors slash medicine okay. and the healing work okay. that you are doing? Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, um, the right stance, right, is that when we are... Pr- uh, uh, as you come for healing, also go to the doctors at the same time. Lah. Like for example, COVID, right? <laughs> yeah. If you're COVID positive, don't come to my house, right? Go straight to NCID, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. But when you are in NCID, I can pray with you, okay? And healing can happen. And, and I'm not talking about natural stuff. Of course, natural, the body does heal itself, right? But there are instances where people are critical condition and then uh, an oxygen level just rise after we pray. Why don't rise at any other time right after, rise up after we pray? Yeah, so, so some coincidence thing, coincidental thing happen so often until it's not coincidental at all. Right? So, so this is how we this is how we gauge uh, um, by healing. Oh, okay. Question on demonic spirits. Uh. Have you ever casted out demonic spirits yep. in your healing ministry? Yep. Maybe yep. you can tell us. Oh, you have. Okay, so maybe yep. you can tell us about uh Yeah, it's not always drama one. Eh. It's not always drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Not uh, that uh, drama. Um, in fact, right, this is what we do, uh, um, when the when 
when we are like in a service hall like that, how I teach my team, right, is that when you pray for the sick, right, and then you see funny things start to manifest, right, stop praying. Stop oh. praying. Yeah, when you pray in tongues and then people start to manifest, they do weird stuff, the, the patterns start to come out. Mm, like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's like that one, huh? Yeah, uh, I mean, just, just look at other places. Uh, just when you, <laughs> that's how they manifest, uh, okay? If you haven't seen it before, you can find it on YouTube. Okay, if you're scared, don't go and see, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, if not, i show you. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, so when, when manifestations start to happen, stop praying for the sake. When you stop praying, the person will stop manifesting. Uh, and, uh, and then we will, we will make a separate appointment. Uh, and the reason is because uh, people are watching, right? You do, uh, um, the devil want, want to distract everybody from Jesus. We want the attention to be kept on Jesus. So if you keep praying for them, they keep manifesting, they make a big hoo-ha. Instead of focusing on Jesus, they focus on that man. Yeah, so, so why don't you stop praying for the person and then things come down, you make a separate appointment, that person will not lose face. Because, uh, because he's not in control of his own body, right? Yeah, so it's just someone just needs to snap a picture, put on Facebook or social media, goes viral and there goes his reputation. And we want to protect that from happening. Protect the person, right? Is there yeah. a specific instance where this has happened to you? Um, and to me? Yeah. Manifest? I mean, no. not you lah, but like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you see <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, okay, according to the question, right? Yes, uh, when we pray for the sick, right? People can get healed, right? But then the, 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 the demonic spirit can still be inside. Mm. Can still be inside, right? So we always make a separate appointment. And then uh, in this, in Grace Assembly's case, for example, yeah, go and find Pastor Benjamin, all right? The, the Holiness Ministry, and they can, they can go through all these things with you. Mm. Right? So, so um, <laughs> in other words, we outsource them. <laughs> okay? Outsource. Yeah, 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 it sounds, it sounds, uh, it sounds weird. Projector. It sounds bad. It sounds bad, but actually we want to focus on what we do in the healing ministry so we don't want all these things to derail us. So we outsource. Oh, okay. I understand, <laughs> right? I understand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe one last thing uh, that we have. What is one advice you would... Okay, it's a personal question. It's not in the chat. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're fasting. I got oh. another question. Okay, yeah. you want to answer this one? Uh? Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, do you normally have, have to, to fast before before uh, healing mission take place? When I pray for a sick, um, I, I used to fast. I used to pray a lot before every time I pray for a sick. But right now, I pray for the sick so often, right? If I were to fast every time, right? Then I don't need to eat at all already. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so, so the fact is, right? You oh, do not, the fact is that you do not need to. It is so natural, like, like when you go and buy food, right? When you go and buy food in the hawker center, you see someone you pray for the person and you just go, it's natural and healing takes place. It works. Mm. You pray and you prepare because you are scared. Don't be scared, all right? Don't be scared. You are a child of God and you have authority in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay, okay, wow. Amen. Okay, okay. to end off, uh, before you pray for us, I, I don't know if, I have not seen any uh, prayer requests with regards to healing, but I think you can still pray. But one last thing yeah. before we end off is, uh, as a next gen, what will you advise us to do in regards to missions in a time where we cannot wow. go overseas? Wow. Get yeah, involved, in the time man. that we... Yeah, because I think like... Okay. No, okay, the reason why I'm asking this, right, is because I think that like last time when I was in RH, like younger, right? Mm. Yeah, I'm still in RH. Okay, last time when I was in RH, right? Missions was a very big thing, like to mm. go overseas, to mm. experience, mm. like what it's like how God encounters us yeah. overseas but now we don't have this opportunity okay. so what is what is one thing you would advise yeah. or encourage the next gen in sure. regards to this sure mm. you know the mission field right okay there is overseas stuff and then some people are really caught to that to unplug yourself and go over there that's good that's true but for the most of us right for, for others of us right uh, uh, missions right, it's actually a blended experience it's actually blended mm. right now mm. uh, because like the things that we do in Singapore and all these things, right? Uh, um, we just need to be good at what we do because the things that are, like this video is uploaded on YouTube, right? Yeah, mm. You don't know who is watching and who will be touched. Just do your best. Imagine you're serving right now, right? Those of you who are serving, right? Yeah, uh, uh, you do your best and people get impacted and you get to chat with other, those who are chatting down there, uh, uh, sitting down there on the chat. Yeah, there are others of us involved here if you do not realise. Okay, um, um, God can just use you to touch anyone, you know? You know the things that you type? Yeah, anything can be read by any, uh, any people for any country. Eh? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so, so um, just do your best and, and let God do the rest. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think especially in this like day and age, the internet is a mission field in itself. Correct. Yeah, yeah. everything yeah. is like there. Yeah. Someone can read a comment. Maybe next week, someone like 
listen to your prayer, then, oh, got healed. Correct. Yeah, like, who yeah. knows? Yeah. yeah, that could happen. Uh, people get healed from recorded prayers, and it? it's crazy. Really? Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so I've received testimonies about it. I'm like, I didn't pray for you. Oh, yeah, you prayed on the video. Huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, I, I hate to end this, but we all the good things have to come to an end. So, would you please yeah, close we, us in we, prayer we are, and we, then... We will continue in heaven, right? Then things are forever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to react to that. Yeah, yeah I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, um, we pray for a sec. Yes. Yeah, okay. Those of you who are watching, right, some of you may, may be physically unwell, okay, and, and some of you are not even conscious that you are physically unwell, right, because you have been living with this um, sickness for a while. Okay, and it becomes so normal until you don't really feel the need to ask for prayer. But the Lord can touch you, amen. Yeah, so uh, some of uh, um, I was just thinking, right, when I was preaching, I, I feel this, uh, what is it called, a tension in my neck. I do not know if some of you actually sprain your neck, okay. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the sprain, the, the stiffness, the stiff neck right now to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you have eczema. I break that eczema right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, what's that, gastric. And then still, what, what's that called, uh, gastric um, Stomach flu uh. No, 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 no no. Uh, um, hole in the heart Yes, this is something I talked about Yeah, some of you have this condition Where you feel breathless very easily And all these things And then this is because of a condition in the heart You have a hole in the heart Right now, in the name of Jesus I break that hole I command the hole on it to close up In the name of Jesus Yeah Amen, wow Very simple, right? The yeah, prayer, simple, right? Yeah. Yeah, in the so, name of Jesus Amen, you, you can, can do, do it too, too. You Yes, can do it too. Wow, I can do it too Yeah, I can yeah, do yeah it prayer too. is just very simple Along the way, yes, as you yes. do your thing Just pray for the sick And then people get healed It's amazing mm. It's not what you do It's what Jesus does Yeah, I think after you have shared all this Like it demystifies the whole yeah, yeah, healing yeah, yeah, process Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like, wow, it's in the name of Jesus It's not weird, you know, it's not weird Okay, with that, we've come to the end of our After service portion Thank you for sticking with us Till yep. now, and we will be hopping off. Have a good weekend. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye.